Good afternoon, guys. Smoking some triple play. GLP's triple play. It's about three years old. Gotten a lot better as it's aged. If you have any, because it comes in a very tight cake form. I uh, flaked it out and uh, aged it, and uh, it smoked a lot better when I let it dry out as well, for whatever, for whatever that's worth. So, ten skills I would like my boys to have when they're grown men. Not ten manliest skills for boys, not ten essential skills for men. The ten skills I would like my sons to have. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, my sister did a video about this, which has inspired me to do the same. I've already gotten a couple of video responses from guys to my previous video, which I appreciate. Very interesting stuff. And um, I wrote a, uh, a blog post about it. Um, if you don't follow my blog, I would love it if you would. It's joffreythegiant.blogspot.com. Or if you follow Joffrey the Giant on Facebook or on Twitter, I'll often post links there. The blog is about pretty much the same thing as the uh, as the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel. Um, there's no, there's less of a tobacco focus. So if you don't do that, I, th I think you might enjoy it. So I wrote this post, and it quickly became one of the most successful posts I'd ever written. Where the resonated people, people enjoyed it, people shared it. So what I'm going to do is actually when I do this video, I'm going to uh, actually go through this post uh, just as a guide, you know, to. What uh, what comes when, and that's what I'll be looking at when you see me looking uh, looking off camera. So these skills for boys, as I said, they're not those you know essential life skills. There's things that I'd be disappointed if my boys didn't have these skills. I'm not talking about things like uh, appreciating uh, smoking a pipe, knowing how to smoke a pipe. I'm not talking about things like uh, knowing what a good whiskey is. Um, things that are, are more matters of taste. Now I did go kind of meta with this list. So there is, uh, you know, a lot of these things are more, uh, if you have the skill it reflects a certain uh, character. And that's the thing that I, that I find admirable. So, um, you know, it's not focusing on bow skills and that sort of thing, changing tires. Some of these are very hands-on, but but most of them are not. And most of these would be absolutely wonderful for women to do as well, uh, but I just kind of look at them from a masculine perspective in this case. So, no further ado, let's get to the list in reverse, but very loose order. Um, the first one is tying a bow tie. That is a hands-on one. You guys have heard me talk about bow ties before. I love what they represent. They're uh, they're somehow at the same time both unassuming and flamboyant. I love that. And they're unassuming because they're disarming. They say I don't take myself too seriously. I'm not a super aggressive man. I'm not wearing the power tie. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind, you know, looking a little silly, if it would be one way to put it. Bow tie lovers don't get upset. I wear a bow tie. Another cool thing about tying a bow tie is that it's such a simple knot. But it's hard to do. So you could say that it's simple and hard. Which is a very masculine thing. Alright, um, number nine. Having a command voice. I'd like my, my boys when they grow up to have a command voice. Command presence. That really is actually a skill. It's not just 
the vocal cords and diaphragm and chest cavity that God has given you. It goes beyond that. Sorry, the grass is a little high in the yard and the bugs are eating me up. Excuse me. Get my feet up off the off the deck here. So it goes beyond the gifts that, uh, that you've been given by God, and uh, it does require a little training. The command voice is not yelling either. It's just uh, it's that timber in your voice that uh, suggests that there's a lot of raw power in here, and you're controlling it purely by strength of will. You can hear that power leaking out a little bit through your tightly controlled voice. That is the tone of voice that makes men obey you. It is a learned thing. You need to have it, see it exemplified. So you need to be in situations where you see how leaders behave. It's not a vital thing to have, <laughs> uh, but, I, but I'd like my boys to have it. All right, number eight, making a speech. more about rhetorical presence. And making a speech is not an easy thing to do. Those of you who have made them know that. Come on now. I am better than many at giving a speech. Most sad day. Which is more of a sad commentary on the state of public rhetoric in this day and age. That it is a commentary on my skills. I left that this out overnight. So giving a speech, having the ability to get up there, speak cogently and winsomely. Well, it's a winsome thing. It's a desirable thing in a man. Number seven, woodworking. My sister chose her number one skill, and you know, she really just tossed it off the cuff, but uh, she chose her number one skill, whittling, because she pictured old men on a porch, whittling and whiling their hours away and could think of nothing more quintessentially manly, and I can only agree with that. But I wanted to go beyond whittling and that image of manliness, and just the idea of woodworking, and I am not a woodworker at all, like at all. The other thing that I've mentioned up till now is something I have. I'm not a woodworker. I've never worked in wood. I'm scared to work in wood, which is a, a problem. I come from a family with absolutely no tradition in, uh, in working with their hands. So, the idea of working with wood is so attractive because I think one of the things that comes across in this list is the... Uh, I think ideal masculinity is hard and strong, uh, but it's giving as well. And I don't just mean giving as in generous, although it is. I mean giving as in it has give, it's nurturing as well. And wood is such a hard, solid, eternal thing. I mean, we look at wood. We live 80 years. A hard wood to us might as well be stone. We may know that stone is, is more permanent than wood, but it doesn't seem that way to our eyes. But then at the same time, wood is, is, is more quick, is more living. So the idea, and you see the, the products of men who handle wood, it looks eternal, but it looks alive at the same time. And so making a pipe, making a table, making a rocking chair, making a sconce, making a baptismal font, whatever it might be. I've always admired that. Number six is not a skill at all. I admitted it in the blog, but I couldn't take it off the list unless I put it on. It's willingness to give it a go. It's an attitude. It's a personality trait, a character trait. There's willingness to give it a shot. And I don't mean that in the, you know, pie in the sky, live out your dreams, what's your big goal in life? I mean that in a very day-to-day -day way. 
I want my sons to be the sort of men who, they're the ones who try that new method. They're the ones who step into that gap. They're the ones who break the ice in the conversation. It really is like a day-to-day -day thing to be that guy who's willing to give it a go, willing to be embarrassed. Um, pride in oneself really ought to have no place uh, in, a, in, a, in a man's life. Yes, I mean, I, that plays into my instructions to my boys on fighting. Um, things have to be pretty <laughs> dire for them to be allowed to fight um, to protect themselves. They actually have to be protecting themselves from real grave danger. But when they're protecting other, they can, others, they can actually be much more aggressive. Like bullying, making fun of your sister or your little brother. Go for it. Have a fight. But if you're trying to, if you're defending your own honor, be big enough not to care. Anyway, so being willing to give it a go kind of sh shows a little bit of that same attitude. Where well, you don't think that highly of yourself. All right, number five, another hands-on skill: gardening. Here I am in my wife's garden. You guys have seen the kids' uh, garden plots. I really what I love what I'm seeing out of my kids uh, as they tend their plots. Uh, I made a list here. Excuse me as I lean in. Uh, patience, tenderness, handling disappointment, stoicism, roughness, joy. These are things that I've seen emerge out of, out of, out of the boys and I still have no interest in gardening, <laughs> but I uh, I do see that as a, as a flaw, particularly when it comes to uh, to patience. So that's something I'd really like to see my my boys be the sort of men who garden, live in that beautiful hobbit life. Number four is the ability, the skill to argue cogently and civilly. Well, there are two things that are integral to public debate, to discussion. They are absolutely gone from the arena of public debate. Um, well, one is more far gone than the other, but with very little respect for logic. And um, so the ability to organize your thoughts and to present it effectively something I want my kids to be able to do. What is more, however, I want them to be able to do that civilly, with respect, without giving way. Because, especially because they're going to grow up in a world where they're being told that even just thinking, even just disagreeing, I should say, even just disagreeing with someone is, is disrespectful, is rude enough as it is. And it's downright hateful to put together an argument against someone else's idea. And so it becomes more difficult and, and it'll also it'll be work to convince the kids that that's not the case because that is the geist of the Zeit. But uh, for them to be able to just push past that and realize that, uh, that you can respect your opponents. Alright, number three how do men cook? Well, here in the South, they smoke. In other areas, they grill meats. I want my boys to be able to cook on a stove. You know, outdoor meat cooking is a culinary ghetto for men. I love to grill a good steak. But... You know, if your wife doesn't allow you to the kitchen, it's not because she's being protective of her turf or because she's domineering. It's because you're not good enough. If you were good enough, trust me, she would let you in there. So I want my sons to be the sorts of guys who can not just grill a steak. By the way, you know, I think the reason men really l love to smoke and grill meat, besides awesome men, things like fire and metal and R is that grilling meat requires 
you to do one thing extremely well. So you, you focus in and you get that steak just right or those ribs just right. But uh, preparing a meal, a whole meal on the stove, uh, cooking a soup, cooking a whatever it might be, requires more multitasking, which is said to be the domain of women. But you and I know better than that, and I want my sons to have that ability to cook on the stove, to lay out a spread, to lay out a meal. All right, down to two. Number two, writing a sonnet, or really being able to write any kind of verse. And far be it from me to say, as regular viewers will know, that the only sort of good poetry is poetry that rhymes. However, I, I believe that in poetry, as in most arts, having strong fundamentals, strong uh, command of structure, that's what leads you to be able to go off and do wh whatever you want. If you start doing whatever you want, you're, you're crap at it. The guys who are truly excellent know how to do those basics. And I'm not saying I want my children to grow up and think, oh, well, think of themselves, well, I am a poet, that's my vocation. But I would like my boys to be able to sit down and, and write verse, write a sonnet, write a funny poem, write a limerick. Particularly because when you're writing in, in, in meter, there's a certain robustness, a certain virility, a certain manliness uh, to, to that, particularly with certain meters. But, um, yeah, I just think there's something awesome and manly about being able to write a sonnet. And I'd like my boys to have that. Finally, number one. Skill number one that I'd like my, uh, my boys to have uh, when they grow up to be men is uh, that I'd like to have them the ability to give a good compliment. It's a lost art, the art of being a gentleman, the art of chivalry is lost. If you can give a good compliment, it makes you a, a better human. Because true compliments come from true love. To be able to look someone in the eye find something real about them that you love or are impressed by and to express that, express that. I mean, if you're giving a lot of compliments and they're all real, that's helping you love. And, uh, you know, since my, you know, you, my boy, my son, are going to be able to cook and write poetry, and make furniture, and all these wonderful things, you're going to be the sort of man whose opinion is sought after. So uh, it won't hurt to have a, a gentle and kind tongue, a tongue that builds up. So there it is, giving a compliment. Uh, manly skill number one I'd like my boys to have when they're men. All right, there it is. That's the list. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Would love uh, to see some more responses to it. Like I said, this seems to have really been resonating with folks. And a reminder before I uh, shut things down. Uh, if you don't uh, read my blog, jockofthegiant.blogspot.com, would love it if you would. Alright y'all, it's been a long video. Peace out, be upon you.